Everything you need for arterial blood gases. There are several labs that you need to memorize. You need to know pH is 7.35 is 7.45. You also need to know that when a pH is below 7.35, it's considered to be acidic. And when the pH is above 7.45, it's considered to be alkaline. You need to know that CO2 is 35 to 45 and that CO2 is acidic. So the higher the CO2, the more acidic the patient is. And you need to know that CO3 is 22 to 26. The other name for HCO3 is bicarbonate. Also, HCO3 is alkaline, so the higher the HCO3, the more alkaline the patient is. The last rule you need to know is that the lungs blow out CO2 and that the kidneys reabsorb HCO3. These labs are actually called arterial blood gases. These are blood gases that we get from arterial blood. Now, in order for us to get arterial blood, we have to do something called the Allen test. But why tell you when I can show you? So this is how you do it. Can you pump your hand and then make a fist? All right, so now I'm gonna include the radial artery and the ulnar artery. Now I want you to open your hand and then I'm gonna release the radial artery. And we see that the hand gets perfused again. It starts turning red. That means the artery is good. Okay, can you do that again? So I'm gonna occlude them again. Then I'm gonna let go of the ulnar. And we see the hand turn red again. This has to happen within six seconds for the artery to be good to be used for an ABG. So that's how you do the Allen test. All right, let's get started on understanding these ABGs. So the first one we're gonna talk about is respiratory acidosis. Now think about what happens when someone doesn't breathe. What happens to the CO2? Are they blowing it out? Or are they keeping it in? They're keeping all their CO2 in. And if you remember one of the rules I said earlier, CO2 is acidic. So if they're keeping all their CO2, then they're getting acidic. So who gets respiratory acidosis? It's anyone who's not breathing good, like patients with pneumonia, COPD, pulmonary embolisms, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and patients who are choking. And this is how the ABG will look. The pH will go down and the CO2 will go up. Make sure you take note of those arrows. So what can we do for these patients? Well, if the issue is not being able to breathe, then we have to help them breathe. So what can we do? We can raise the head of the bed. We can give them oxygen. We can give a medication called albuterol to open up the bronchioles. And if we really have to, we'll do something called mechanical ventilation, which means the doctor will intubate the patient, put a tube down their throat, and then connect them to a machine to help them breathe. All right, so now let's talk about respiratory alkalosis. Now, if respiratory acidosis was not being able to breathe, then respiratory alkalosis is breathing way too much. Patients with respiratory alkalosis are breathing so much that they're blowing out all their CO2. And if you remember, CO2 is acidic. So if you blow out all your CO2, you're losing all your acid and all you're left with is alkaline. Now, if you're wondering who would breathe way too much, the answer to that is anyone having anxiety. So panic attacks cause the patient to breathe too much, causing them to lose all their CO2, losing all their acid. So if the patient loses all their acid, then how will the ABG look? It'll look like this. The pH will go up and the CO2 will go down. Make sure you take note of the arrows. So what can we do for these patients with respiratory alkalosis? We give them a paper bag. So if they're breathing out all their CO2, then we give them a paper bag so that way they breathe back in their CO2. Now in the hospital, we don't really have paper bags laying around everywhere. So what we do is you give them a face mask and you don't turn on the oxygen. That way they breathe back their CO2. All right, now we're moving on to metabolic alkalosis. Now, the main person who gets metabolic alkalosis is anyone vomiting or being suctioned with an NG tube. Now, why does this happen? Well, just think, what's inside your stomach? Inside your stomach is acid. So if you vomit a whole bunch, then you lose all your acid. Same thing with being suctioned. You're losing all your acid. If you lose all your acid, then what's left in the body? It's only alkaline that's left. So how does the ABG look? The pH will be up and the HCO3 will be up. Keep taking note of those arrows. Now the treatment of metabolic alkalosis really involves treating the cause, but you can also give a diuretic such as acetazolamide to increase the amount of bicarbonate that's being excreted.
The last acid base imbalance we need to look at is called metabolic acidosis. Now, I like to call this metabolic acidosis. Now, what do I mean by that? Diarrhea. Metabolic acidosis is caused by diarrhea, but it can also be caused by several other things like renal failure or DKA. This is how it will look. The pH will be down and the CO3 will be down. And for the last time, memorize those arrows. The treatment for metabolic acidosis involves treating the cause as well. You want to stop whatever's causing the diarrhea. You want to fix the renal failure with dialysis. And then you want to treat the DKA with insulin and fluids. So specifically for the NCLEX, they're going to give you a disease or symptoms. And then they're going to ask you, what type of acid base imbalance is it? So let's take a look at this example. It says, the nurse is caring for a patient that has had C. diff for the past two weeks. The patient is most likely experiencing which acid base imbalance? And then there's four options, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis, and metabolic acidosis. So this is how you're gonna answer it. You're gonna use the process of elimination first. So you're gonna go in order. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, is the patient having a hard time breathing? The question doesn't say they are, so it can't be respiratory acidosis. Is the patient breathing too much or hyperventilating? No, the question didn't say, so it can't be respiratory alkalosis. Then you need to ask yourself, is the patient vomiting? The question didn't say they're vomiting, so it can't be metabolic alkalosis. So if the patient is not having a hard time breathing, and they're not breathing too much, and they're not vomiting, then it has to be metabolic acidosis. And in this case, it is metabolic acidosis. C. diff is a disease that causes a lot of diarrhea. All right, now we're gonna learn to read blood gases. Now, everyone has different ways of doing this. So if you have your own way that works for you, then that's great, keep doing it as long as you get the answer right. But otherwise, this is the way I do it. So here's our problem. We have a pH that's 7.05, a CO2 that's 35, and a CO3 that's 15. So ask yourself, are any of these out of range? If the answer is yes, then this is an acid base imbalance that you have to figure out. So the first thing you need to do is draw arrows on the pH, the CO2 and CO3. So your pH is down, your CO2 is even, and your CO3 is down. Now the reason you memorized all those arrows before is because of this. It's called Rome. It stands for respiratory opposite metabolic equal. That means if the arrows are going in opposite direction, it is a respiratory problem. If the arrows are going in equal direction, it's a metabolic problem. And in this case, all the arrows are going in an equal direction. So this is a metabolic issue. So we're going to write down metabolic. Now how we figure out the second part of this is by looking at the pH. Is the pH low? Then it's acidic. If the pH is high, then it's alkaline. And in this case, the pH is low, so it's going to be acidic. So this is metabolic acidosis. All right, now I'm going to teach you how to do compensation with these ABGs. So here's our problem. pH is 7.26, CO2 is 27, and CO3 is 12. So the first part is the same. We're going to figure out the ABG like we did last time. So we draw our arrows, pH is down, CO2 is down, and CO3 is down. So since all the arrows are going in equal direction, we know this is going to be metabolic. Then we look at the pH and we see that it's low and we know this is acidosis. But now we have to figure out the compensation portion of this. All right, so to figure out if there's compensation, you need to ask yourself this, are all the blood gases abnormal? And in this case, they are abnormal. Since they're abnormal, that means there is compensation involved. And we have to move on to the next question. And the next question is, what is being compensated? And this one's really easy. Remember the ABG you chose, metabolic acidosis? All you have to do is choose whatever is opposite of this. So what's the opposite of metabolic? It's respiratory. And what's the opposite of acidosis? Alkalosis. So the compensating mechanism is respiratory alkalosis. The last thing we need to figure out is whether this is full or partial compensation. So you have to ask yourselves, is the pH normal? If the pH is normal, then it is fully compensated. If the pH is abnormal, then it is partially compensated. And in this case, the pH is 
which is abnormal. So this is going to be partially compensated. All right, guys, so now I'm going to show you one of my favorite websites to practice this. It's called abg.ninja. And in this website, you can practice a whole bunch of ABGs. So here we go to arterial blood gases right in the middle. And then let's try one. All right, so the pH is low, the CO2 is normal, and the CO3 is low. So this is going to be metabolic. Since the pH is low, it's acidosis. And then to figure out compensation, I ask myself, are all ABGs abnormal? And I take a look at CO2 and CO3. And I see that while CO3 is abnormal, CO2 is not abnormal. So there is no compensation. Remember, for there to be compensation, both CO2 and CO3 must be abnormal. That was everything you need for arterial blood gases.